Hey guys, Peter here, back again for another video. So last weekend, I went out with a bunch of friends and I met a couple of new people and one of them is a UI UX designer. We talked about work, how long was he in the industry, and what project he has been working on. And when I asked about his portfolio, he mentioned that he didn't have one. And I realized I've had the same exact conversation countless times with other designers and they all say the same thing. They do not have a portfolio website to showcase their work. On this video, we'll be talking about how important it is to have a portfolio website, how to design it, and what tools to use to develop it, and the do's and don'ts of creating your own portfolio website. Ready to get started? So this is my portfolio. When I designed this website, I made it a priority to really showcase not just my client work but also my other hobbies and personal projects. This is to tell my potential clients that I am a well-rounded designer and that I have other areas that I am good at as well. This doesn't mean that you should put every pixel that you created on your portfolio though. You should pick and choose just the best and not the lackluster ones. After all, you want your best foot forward, right? So first of all, how important it is to have your own portfolio website? And the answer is very much. Obviously, it is the place where you showcase your work, but it also gives your potential clients and employers an idea about who you are as a worker and how you work on your craft. A portfolio website is also more professional compared to just having a Dribbble, Instagram, or Behance account. I mean, those channels are important too, but nothing beats having a place for your own where you can really make your work shine. So what do you put in your portfolio website? Let's start with a homepage. First, a sentence for your general title. If you're a product designer, you put that in your hero section, or if you're a graphic designer, that. And then add a short description saying what you specialize in and generally something to really sell your services. The next thing that you should put in your homepage is your projects or your case studies, but not all of it. Two or three will do just fine for the homepage because you want to put the whole list of them in the case studies page. You may ask, why even bother having another page for all of my work instead of just having a one page site? The main reason for this is SEO. When clients look for a graphic designer in your area, your work page will show up in Google and the client won't have to scroll down on your homepage to see some of your work. Also, separating all of your works in a different page is just cleaner in a sitemap sort of way. By the way, if you like this kind of videos, please like and subscribe. I talk about web design, branding, product design, development, and a whole lot more on the channel. And it would be great if you can reach 200 subs. Anyway, back to the video. It is also a good idea to add some of your personal work in your website. Maybe you did an exploration for a brand that you are very happy and proud with, or when you were learning how to code and you developed a website on your own. That is something that should be put in your website. This will show potential clients that you are willing to do the research, practice, and spend time on your craft without the prospect of getting paid. And if you work for an agency and most of your designs are under NDA, you obviously cannot put them in your portfolio, right? What you can do is choose elements from that project like aesthetic, colors, logos, fonts, images, and just change them into something different. This way, you still get something out of it without breaking the NDA. Another thing that you can do is use the logo of the brands that you have worked with and put them in the home page. This will show potential clients that you can handle big projects and not afraid of the challenge. Plus, it will also add more prestige to your services. The next section that you should put in your homepage is a blog. I know, I know, this is a very big ask because writing is one of those skills that you really should put time in to be good at. But I assure you, this is very important and let me tell you why. If you are not a native English speaker, it will tell your potential clients that you have a very good handle with the language. One of the requisites of remote work is being able to understand English and the best way to show that is through a blog. And the biggest reason is introspection. When you write about a certain topic and convert your thoughts into words, it gives a different perspective about certain things and will make you dig deeper into the how and why of design. This is actually funny because when I started writing articles, it made me a better designer because I can think of why I did this and the reasons for my decisions. If you have been designing for a long time, 
there are things that come naturally to you and are basically just muscle memory when you do them. Writing about your actions give meaning to them. And one last reason is, writing is just a useful skill to have. That's it. The next piece of the puzzle to your perfect portfolio are testimonials. These are short messages from your past or present clients that say how good you are at your job or what you did on a project that made it a success. Never be shy to ask for testimonials from clients because if you did a great job, they would be very happy to do so. However, if for some reason you cannot add real testimonials, please do not add fake ones. They are very easy to disprove and having something fake on your portfolio is morally wrong and a disservice to your skill. Just keep on trying to do your best and the testimonials will come. And lastly, the most important part of your whole portfolio are the contact details. Way back then, I would usually go for a contact form but I realized that a simple email link would totally suffice. You can also include your Skype username or Telegram or whatever channels you prefer to be contacted on. So let's recap. Here are the things that you should put in your portfolio. In the hero section, you should add your title and a short description explaining what it is. You can also add a button directing your users to the case studies page where they can see the full list of your projects. Next are 2-3 to three case studies of your most recent work. If you have personal projects or explorations, you should add them here as well. Next are your blog posts. Maybe you talk about your design processes or maybe how your typical day looks like or your recent trips. And lastly, just your contact details. That's it. Those are the most basic things that you should have on your homepage. Feel free to add more sections if you want to as well. The next thing that we will be talking about now are the other pages on your website. Specifically, the case studies page, the actual case study, and the about pages. On your case studies page, this is where you will be putting all of your case studies of your most recent projects. In my portfolio, I added a sorting dropdown so that potential clients can easily search for projects that they have already worked on. I also suggest to use device mockups for your thumbnails instead of just having the naked designs. This will make your case studies look better and more presentable on your individual case studies. If you can also include the fonts that you used, the colors, the brief, the design explanations, this will help your clients know more about the project and how important your role was in there. Once you have your design finished, you either have to decide whether to have your design developed by another developer or you learn how to code it yourself. If you decide to learn how to code, you can either choose Next.js for your React framework or Next.js for Vue. But whatever you decide, if you use a JavaScript framework or just plain old HTML and CSS, as long as you have a website up and running, that is exponentially more important than not having one at all. Just make sure that your website is fully responsive so that it looks good in desktop as well as mobile devices. For your about page, you can include a little history about yourself and how long have you been working in the industry. You can also add a short line about what product niches that you have worked on, for example, e-commerce, crypto, or what have you. And lastly, here are some of the things that you should not put on your portfolio website. First are skill levels. They are totally subjective and very hard to prove if they are accurate or not. You will also be underselling yourself if you put a low score on something instead of not saying anything at all. Second is your whole life story. Yes, I mentioned that you should learn how to write and put out blog posts, but your personal portfolio is a professional tool and in the professional setting, you should not be pouring your heart out for all the world to see. Please don't include that one time 10 years ago where your dad had to buy a pack of cigarettes and a gallon of milk and didn't come back. You know, um, I jest, but you get my point. Just keep your content professional and just focus on the work. The third thing that you should never put in your portfolio is everything that you ever designed. No, you should not put your middle school art project or the logo for your lemonade stand. I know that it may seem like a waste of effort and time that you spent on those projects, but should only showcase your best and most recent work. I probably only have 25% of my work on my portfolio, and I think that is still too much. So that's it guys. At the end of the day, what's important is that you have a website that you designed yourself, have full control over, and are very proud of. 
When you have your own portfolio website, you will separate yourself from the other designers that don't have one and clients and companies will prefer you more compared to them. If you want to see some of my work, you can check out my personal website. I share free Figma and Photoshop templates there that you can download and use for your designs. You can also download the design from this video and use it as a starter template for your new website. Also, check out my other videos where I redesigned the Fantex website or that one time where I created a totally new brand for a beverage can. And that's it. Stay creative, keep on improving, and I'll see you on the next one.